And he didn't know how to tell where he lived. He didn't remember his address. And when the authorities were checking with him and asking them him where he lived, uh, he said, I don't know where I live. Uh, but he said, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, if you'll take me to the cross, uh, I can find my way back home. Uh, just get me to the cross. Uh, get me to the cross, uh, and I'll make it. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, that's what we need today, uh, to bring people to the cross uh, and let them kneel at the cross uh, and find Jesus real uh, in their hearts and lives. Oh, glory to God. You know, I don't know what kind of blood I got. I know I got blood. And I know I got a heart that pumps that blood. But blood is based and rated in all kinds of ways. Isn't it positive and negative and this number and that number? I don't know so much about that, but I know one thing. I want to tell you about a blood tonight that's rated above all of the others, and that's the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? Why is that blood so wonderful, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because of the fact that Jesus did not have an earthly father. You understand that he was born of a virgin. That he was conceived by the Holy Ghost. Uh, and the blood in a human body comes from the father. Uh, and in that he did not have uh, an earthly father. Uh, one who had sin in his life. Uh, but was conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I want you to know uh, that his blood uh, was capable. Uh, when it was shed on the cross. Uh, to forgive me and you. Uh, you and I of our sins. Uh, and I am thankful tonight for the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, I, I grew up singing a song, Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, let's learn something about, about the blood of Jesus. It had the capability to atone for man's sins. Listen to this. Christ's vicarious death. Don't ask me what these big words mean. Christ's vicarious death was deficient for none, sufficient for all, but efficient only for those who believe. That's why the scripture says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. How many are believers here tonight? Let us see your hand. Do you believe me? Everybody believer? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad for that promise? Uh, but aren't you glad for the reality of the fact that tonight you know that because of the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, you're a child of God. Hallelujah. And your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, uh, and you're on your way to heaven. Praise God. Shouting the victory. Now listen to this. Don't miss it. Morality will keep you out of jail. Right? But it takes the blood of Jesus to keep you out of hell. That's why we must preach and declare because there is no other way that man can be saved and escape hell except through the blood of Jesus. Wow. You know, the blood is the lifeline. And I remember one time they... I guess I should get this personal. But they were going to run a catheter up through my femoral vein over into my heart. And that femoral vein is the biggest vein that there is. And that's why it is so possible that a person could bleed to death. Amen? And that's why for four hours after that, I had to lay so still that I could not even wiggle my toe. 
because of the possibility of that breaking loose uh, and if that would break loose and somebody was not immediately there to take care of it, I could bleed to death. That's why the Bible says the life is in the blood. Amen? Amen. The life is in the blood. You're not going to live very long without blood. In the natural physical body. And you're not going to live eternally in heaven with Jesus Christ without the blood of Jesus having been applied into your heart. Glory to God. That's why when people get low on blood, you know what they get? They get a transfusion. And that transfusion keeps them alive. One day, I got a transfusion. I was only five years old, but I got a transfusion. And it was the blood of Jesus, hallelujah. And I am spiritually alive today, and because of it, I have the hope of eternal life. Glory to God. Wow. I like this. The Bible says in the Old Testament, and in the New Testament, the book of Hebrews, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. There is no forgiveness of sins. There is no removal of sins. And I am so thankful tonight that we don't have to do it like they used to have to do it back in the Old Testament uh, for the high priest to offer up the blood of bulls and of goats uh, and do it on the Day of Atonement, which was once a year. Uh, and first he had to offer up blood for his own <coughs> sins. Uh, but we have a great high priest. Uh, his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. He is the great high priest. Uh, and he offered his blood. Uh, and he did it once and for all. Uh, and nothing more could be done or has to be done. That's why I read the text to you tonight when he said it is finished Whew. glory to God glory to God hallelujah hallelujah when Christ died on the cross he made that eternal sacrifice now what about the power that there is in the blood? You know, I grew up in church singing a song, there's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Stains, spillage, and spots can either be removed or be covered. Sometimes we try to cover things up. And you know what? When you do that, it's still there. It's still there. It's still there. My son-in-law's in the floor maintenance business. Boy, he's good at getting, getting stains out. Sometimes I marvel at how he does that. Some people think that the blood of Jesus covers our sins. Well, I don't believe that. I believe tonight that the blood of Jesus does much more than cover our sins. In fact of the matter, the blood of Jesus removes our sins and the Bible says it's as far as the east is from the west and that he will never remember them against us anymore. I've gone halfway around the world, east. I never met west. I've gone halfway around the world, west. I've never met east. I, 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 I had, a, had a friend one time that had a business entitled where east meets west. And I asked him one day, I said, uh, what do you mean by that? He said, I don't know, I'm just getting attention with it. But Jesus takes our sins. Get this, folks. 
and he removes them from us as far as the east is from the west. And he says, I'll never, never, never remember them against you anymore. Boy, I wish a lot of human beings that I know were like that. I wish to God that they could forgive and forget. But they say they forgive, but they continue to remember. And they always want to bring it up, bring it up. Yeah, that guy is a wonderful guy, but... Remember what he did. That woman's a wonderful woman, but remember what she did. I want to tell you something. Uh, what matters to me the most tonight uh, is that we understand that we have a Savior who forgives uh, and forgets uh, and says, Never again will I remember it against you. In fact, he takes our sins uh, and he, he buries them uh, in the sea of forgetfulness. Uh, and they're gone. Uh, and God says, it's over with, uh, and it's past. <sighs> Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justified, yea, rather, that is risen again. I want to quote you some verses tonight. Ephesians 1, 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, 1 Peter 1.18, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but with the blood of Jesus, as of a lamb slain from before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7. And I like it. I think it's wonderful. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, uh, and the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us uh, from all sin. First John 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sin, uh, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins uh, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Praise the Lord. I've been doing a study in the book of Revelation. Wow, 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 do I love that. And you know, in the seventh chapter, Great story. God says, don't hurt. Don't hurt these until they have been sealed. And after they were sealed, 144,000 of them, 12,000 out of each of the 12 tribes. You know, <laughs> that's such a phenomenal thing, isn't it? 144,000 sealed evangelists. 144,000 Billy Grahams? God raise up somebody like that again. Hallelujah. But anyhow, here's what I'm getting at. Not the fact that they were 12,000 out of each tribe. Not the fact that they were sealed by God so that they were protected. But the fact of what they did for the Lord and right after that, uh, John sees a number of people uh, and he said, who are these people? Uh, and the answer is given back to him. Uh, these are they that have come out of great tribulation uh, and have washed their robes uh, and made them white uh, in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. These are, it was an innumerable number that no man could number that had washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Wow. Revelation chapter 12 talks about a war. And in verse 11, we see after Satan <laughs> is cast down. You know, let me tell you something about Satan. Don't ever follow him. Don't ever follow him. I, I, I want you to look at his progression. He started out as Lucifer, the anointed guardian of God's throne. And then he blew it. He was as high as you could possibly get. And he blew it. And then he became the prince of the power of the air, which he still is today. But then He's going to be cast down to the earth. Revelation 12 talks about it. And he begins to make war 
against the saints in verse 11 says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they loved not their lives even unto death. Wow. So from the throne room to the air 